three, two, one. Good morning, members. Good morning, members of the public. You're all very welcome to this meeting of the Planning Committee of Baber District Council. First of all, may I remind you of some of the domestic arrangements. Members, please, please ensure that the microphones and cameras are turned off when not in use. That you do not interrupt other speakers. If you wish to speak, point of order, declaration, interest or request an adjournment, please use the hands up function on the taskbar. And after you've spoken, please remember to turn it off. Members are reminded that they should not have alternative communication lines open, i.e. other scope chats, and that if you are contacted by a third party during an application, you should bring this to the attention of the legal advisor. If you are attending the meeting to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you may be asked to leave. If members do lose connection to the meeting, that they must contact the member support officer, Mandy Smith, as soon as possible. You all have her numbers. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewings. The whole of the meeting will be recorded except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the council to have consented to being recorded. By entering this meeting as a speaker, you are also consenting to being recorded by the council and to the possible use of those same recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not lawfully excluded. I'd now like to uh, introduce you to the officer's support in this today. It's Mark Russell, Area Plan and Manager, uh, Linda Bacon, Case Officer, Andy Press, Plan and Lawyer, Robert Carmichael, Governance Officer and Car Caroline Yetman, Heritage Officer. Now I intend to move to the agenda. First of all, I'm going to ask for uh, um, present and uh, substitutions. Um, I'm going to call on Robert to uh, go through the roll call for members. Thank you, Chair. So I'll just do the roll call. So if you could please respond with present or good morning. So Councillor Suez. Good morning. Councillor Melian Barrett. Yes, present. Councillor Peter Beer. Present. Councillor Trevor Cresswell. Present. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, just a note, Councillor Cresswell is subbing for Councillor Alison Owen. Thank um, you. Yeah. Councillor Busby. Present. Councillor Gould. Yes, good morning. And just a note there as well, uh, Councillor Gould is substituting for Councillor Lee Jamieson today. Thank you. Councillor Hinton. Present. Councillor Mary McLaren. Present. Councillor Adrian Osborne. Morning, present. Councillor Lee Parker. Present. Councillor Stephen Plum. Present. And we have the ward member as well, just one of the ward members, um, because Councillor Trevor Questwell is on the committee today of Councillor Jan Osborne as well. Thank you. Uh, item two, to receive any declarations of interest by members. Are there any to declare? No, I can't see any hands up. No, Chairman, may I? Yes, um, I'm coming to you now. Yep, sure. the legal uh, officer. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I should just give it, I ought to give a quick piece of advice here, which is that mm. um, it's stating the obvious, this part of this application site is, a con is an old conservative club still named as such, and a casual observer might have some cause for concern. But um, if we look at this matter more closely, the um, the applicant, as it says in your report, is Rod is not the Conservative Party, either nationally or a local Conservative Association. It is not. Um, 
It is Rogerson Holdings Limited with Mr. Peasland, who's here with us as their agent. I've, I've inquired, I'm told that the landowner is not a cons specifically conservative association, local or otherwise. So, uh, and, and I understand that this, and indeed it's made clear to some degree in the papers, that it's not been used as for its original purpose as a conservative club for several years, maybe 10 years or so. So with all that in mind, n none of the conservative members of this committee need feel any embarrassment or um, obvious um, need to declare any interest in determining this matter. But having said that, the, the normal rules apply as they do in every application of every member. If you think you might have a interest or a, uh, a worry as to whether you should be a decision maker, that ought to be declared anyway. But that's, that is just my advice on this matter so far. Thank, thank you very much. That's very clear. No, I, I certainly don't. Um, and there's no hands going up, so I'm assuming everybody's quite happy with that. Right, we'll move to the next item, and that's to confirm the minutes um, of the last meetings held on the 15th of July. Are there any points of accuracy on these? No? Right, I need a proposal and a second to them, please. I'll propose that, Mr Chairman. Councillor Osborne, thank you very much. Do I have a seconder? Yes, I'll, I'll second it. Councillor uh, Barrett, thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do another roll call or do you want to do all these in one? No, I think we'd better do them separate. So I need to do a roll call then, um, Robert. Thank you, Chair. So, um, if you could please respond with for, against or abstain. So, Councillor Sue Ayres. Four. Councillor Melanie Barrett. Four. Councillor Peter Beer. Four. Councillor Trevor Cresswell. Abstain. Councillor David Busby. Four. Councillor Jane Gould. Abstain. Councillor John Hinton. Come back to him. Yeah. Did you get me there? Hello. Oh, sorry, Councillor. If you could just Four. repeat your vote. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Mary McLaren. Four. Councillor Adrian Osborne. Four. Councillor Lee Parker. Abstain. And Councillor Stephen Plum. Four. Thank you, Chair. That is carried. Thank you. These will be signed at the next practical opportunity. We need to move on to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 26th of August. You've all seen them. Um, are there any points that people wish to clarify or accuracy? No hands up. Oh. Uh, then I need a proposal and a seconder again. I'll propose I'll, them, right? I'll, I'll second, second. Thank you very much. And Councillor Barrett has seconded them. Um, I'll ask Rob to do a roll call again. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, same procedure as before, please. If you could respond with for, against, or abstain. So, Councillor Sue Ayres. Four. Councillor Melanie Barrett. Four. Councillor Peter Beer. Four. Councillor Trevor Cresswell. Abstain. Councillor David Busby. Four. Councillor Jane Gould. Abstain. Councillor John Hinton. Four. Councillor Mary McLaren. Four. Councillor Adrian Osborne. Four. Councillor Lee Parker. Abstain. Councillor Stephen Plum. Four. Thank you, Chair. I make that carried by eight votes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Thank, Thank you, you very Chair. much. That's accepted. Um, then they also will be signed at the next practical opportunity. Now, do we have another set of minutes, Rob? Uh, no, Chair. That was both of them. That was both of them. You've got them Thank in line you. there. Good. Right. Um, um, then we'll move on to receive any notification of any petitions in accordance with the council scheme. Um, uh, Robert Carmichael. 
Uh, sorry, Chair, just before I interrupt, uh, Councillor Parker has got his hand up. Sorry if we both. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, he hadn't come up the side. He's come along the bottom of my uh, screen. I must look there as well. Um, sorry, uh, Councillor Parker, I wasn't looking there. I was looking at the side. Uh, no, yes. No, no problem, Chair. And actually, um, I'm sorry because I've just realised, but I mean, I've given my vote now, so it doesn't matter. But um, I've just realised in the, uh, I wasn't listening, Chair. I apologise. In the first set of minutes, I was present for actually. I, yes, I, uh, sort of, I voted to abstain, but um, happy to go with that if uh, if that's the correct procedure. Yeah, I'll ask uh, Ian. Well, I think I think the vote has been given, and it, it would the, the change of vote. It's a practical formality, and the, the vote would. I, I think we just let it lie as it is. Yeah. I think you'd be the same mind, yeah. Mr. Carmichael. Yeah, it's just noted that they were clear, and he's yeah. clear. That's fine. Oh. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Parker. Uh, right, sorry, Rob. Petitions. Yep. So there's. Uh, sorry, Chair. There's uh, none received. Thank you very much. Site inspections. Officers, are there any site inspection requests? Uh, Mark, wherever you are. Yeah, uh, yes, Chair. Uh, obviously, you'll be aware that um, Councillor Jan Osborne had asked whether we could look at this site uh, today, but the response given was still that we're, we're not doing site visits at the moment. Thank you. Um, I think County are looking at trying to bring back some of their site inspections in October, but because after the last 24 hours that made all change again mightn't it uh, my colleagues from ipswich aren't aren't doing them at all at the moment so there is there is a variety of um yes approaches okay thank you uh, members i have to ask you are there any site inspection requests no thank you sorry can i just ask yes? if we wanted a site inspection if um could there be a, a video uh, made by the planning officer so that that would allow us to sort of visit virtually. Good point. Uh, we Mark. did this for the worst of applications and I think it's a sensible approach to be honest because then you've got as we did last time have it up before the meeting you've got a chance to look around the site so it, it's a good idea. So there's a possibility. <clears throat> yeah thanks thanks. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, Right, then we move to plan and applications on page 23, Victoria Hall, New Street, Sudbury. Um, and Linda Baker, you're taking us through that if you'd like to um, carry on. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. So, hopefully, the presentation is now appearing on your screen so I'll continue. Yes it um, is. This is a it's a full application for development of the site that includes Victoria Hall, the Conservative Club and New Hall. This aerial image puts the site in some context. Um, North Street, which is the top end, north end of uh, Sudbury, is, is here. The Masonic Hall is on this corner here. Um, this is New Street running down here. And um, Prince Street runs crossways here. And the Prince of Wales public house is on the corner here. Um, the road here is the A131. Um, it's the one-way system that runs through Sudbury. Hello, you've disappeared. Hello, can you still hear me? We uh, can now, yep. Yeah, I think the slides are taking a long time to change. Right, okay, we'll bear that in mind. We're still on number two. Yeah. Right, slide three, hopefully yep. you can now see. Yep. So this shows the uh, constraints map. The um, the purple hatching is the conservation area, so the site's within the conservation area. Um, the list of buildings are shown in orange um, and the site is hatched. Um, all three buildings that are on the site, that's the Victoria Hall, the Conservative Club and New Hall itself, they're all on the Sudbury list and are locally listed non-designated heritage assets. This um, site location plan outlines the application site in red. New Hall is the, the long building to the rear 
Victoria Hall and the Conservative Club occupy the corner of Prince Street and New Street here. The Conservative Club is roughly um, in this area and fronts on to New Street, whereas Victoria Hall is here and fronts on to Prince Street. So this shows the existing elevations. The top image um, shows the existing elevations of New Hall. It's um, an elongated single storey building with banks of small paned windows that, um, that point to its historical use as a silk manufactory. And it has historical associations to local industry and as such it makes um, a deserved entry onto the local list. Victoria Hall below is a 19th century theatre and it's connected to the Conservative Club now and it's been used um, in more recent years as part or in connection with the Conservative Club. The, um, the top left image repeats the Victoria Hall facade onto Prince Street. The top right is the elevation of the Conservative Club fronting New Street. The bottom left is the existing block plan for Victoria Hall and the Conservative Club. Victoria Hall is this um, area to the rear and the Conservative Club is this series of buildings um, to the front. The, the right hand image is the, um, the elevations that are within the site itself. So previously there's been a planning permission granted for the conversion or the the part conversion of Victoria Hall and the full conversion of the Conservative Club into five flats. Um, this was a full planning permission, which resulted in permission for two flats in the, um, in the front section of Victoria Hall and three flats in the Conservative Club. New Hall itself, which is the building here, was not part of that planning permission. So this image shows the approved elevations um, for that flat conversion um, and that introduced minimal external alterations to the frontages um, and that was approved as part of that planning permission for conversion and the changes mainly related to, to windows so there was minor alterations to windows. So turning to the current proposal, the application comprises three elements. The first is the demolition of all but the front facade of Victoria Hall and the construction of two dwellings behind the retained facade um, to provide two four-bed dwellings with garden area and car parking space behind. Um, the second element is the full demolition of the Conservative Club um, in its entirety and the construction of two three-bedroom and two four-bedroom dwellings. That's here. And the third element is the partial demolition in this area here of New Hall to facilitate parking. And then there's the conversion of the north end of the remainder of New Hall into a, um, a design studio or gallery. And at the southern end, uh, it will be converted into a two bed dwelling. Other than uh, New Hall, the New Hall conversion itself, each dwelling in this area has uh, a small garden and two parking spaces each. New Hall itself will be pro provided with one space for the dwelling here and then there's one space for the um, design um, studio or gallery here. Access to the site will be off of North Street itself which is it's a little difficult to discern but North Street is up here and then the access is in here round to the rear. Um, the existing access at present is located off of New Street um, in this area and that existing access will be blocked off by one of the new dwellings proposed. Mm -hmm. So turning to the elevations, the, the top row of elevations are the public elevations. Um, so the top left uh, fronts Prince Street mm -hmm. and that's Victoria Hall. And the top right is what will front New Street uh, in place of the Conservative Club. Um, remembering that the only facade that will be retained is the front facade of Victoria Hall here. All other uh, built form is new construction. The construction materials um, on the Prince Street side um, here comprise red brick, um, red clay plain tiles and Beyond here is, is slate. 
um, on the new street frontage, there's a mix of materials. So we've got red brick, there's then red cedar cladding, um, there's render, there's red clay plain tiles, there's um, vertical cladding, there's red brick, and I believe the roof will be slate here. So the floor plans are a little difficult to read, but the bottom row along here is what's behind the Victoria Hall facade and creates two four bed um, dwellings over three floors. The top and the middle row are on the site of the Conservative Club and comprise two three beds, and that's over two storeys, and two four beds over three storeys. This uh, plan is for the conversion um, of New Hall itself. The dashed line here indicates the demolition of three bays of um, New Hall itself. The floor plan shows the creation of the two bed dwelling on the southern end of what remains of New Hall and the design studio is at the north end. <clears throat> Many of you um, are going to be familiar with the site, but for those who aren't, I'll run through some photos. So this is the Conservative Club, as it is today, fronting New Street. Um, the materials and the decorative features, which include uh, oriel windows and some detailed barge boards, should be, should be noted. Um, this is an alternative view of the same, and... That's the old mill building. Um, North Street is, is off to the right. Um, this shows the existing access um, and the three-storey building that's proposed will be just short of the, uh, the Lean 2 addition next door. A closer photo of the Conservative cr uh, Club fronting onto New Street. Um, Prince of Wales on the corner. Um, Print Street down here. So this is across the front of New Street, looking towards North Street at the top end. Um, the materials of the Conservative Club change at this point from the gold brick on the New Street side to red brick on the Print Street side. Um, more of the same, really, looking up towards North Street. This is Victoria Hall itself, fronting onto Print Street. Um, this one's self-evident. So Victoria Hall fronting Prince Street, uh, one-way system at the end, the side of the Prince of Wales public house is shown. Uh, another one of, of Victoria Hall onto Prince Street. So this is uh, New Hall. It's the side wall of New Hall as it fronts onto the A131 one-way system through the town. This being New Hall here. A more distant view of New Hall. So to the the left, you can see the um, there's the existing access, which will be utilised by this development. It's blocked off from the one way system, the, the A131, by the bollards, but entry is off the top of North Street. This is New Hall uh, along the existing access. That fence will be removed as part of the development. Um, closer view of New Hall itself, as I say, the fence will be removed. Um, just to show you what the buildings look like prior to some of the windows being boarded up more recently. So these are taken from Google Street View. So this is of uh, Victoria Hall itself. And then this is um, of the Conservative Club building, taken from a few different views of uh, Street View. So. Um, its detailed features can be seen, as is the, the gabled ends um, that front onto New Street. So that's just to give you a flavour of what the building would look like if it didn't have some of its windows boarded. Um, so turning to the, the key issues, the application, the main, summar the main issues are summarised in bold here. There are other issues that are highlighted in, in the report, but as these aren't considered to be significant issues, I won't refer to those now. The main issues relate to the fact that the three existing buildings are non-designated heritage assets. They're on the local list and within the conservation area. Firstly, any demolition must be fully justified. And secondly, the replace, replacement building must preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area. Officers consider that the proposed development does neither. 
The structural report submitted today fail to provide sufficient justification for the demolition, but instead conclude that retention and conversion of the existing would require considerable expenditure to remedy uh, defects in the building. However, this isn't explained or quantified in the report. Officers further consider that the design of the proposal incorporates elements that are inappropriate in the conservation area. The variety of facing materials, which include red brick and roof tiles and red cedar cladding, plus the design styles employed, do not preserve or enhance character and appearance of the conservation area. The design of the replacement buildings is such that it doesn't outweigh the loss of architectural and historic quality of the Victoria Hall Theatre, the Conservation Club and the New Hall Silk Factory. And this is a view that's reinforced in comments received from the Suffolk Preservation Society and the Sudbury Society. And those are reported in detail in your papers. The application is therefore recommended for refusal as per your report and for the reasons shown here. Thank you. That's slide 31. Thank you very much for that, uh, Linda. Um, members, I'm just going to ask whether there's any points that you'd like clarified by the case officer. I've just got one. Linda, you did say that you'd, you felt that it hadn't been um, justified or explained fully. Uh, is this relating to the fact that you've tried to get points clarified and they haven't been forthcoming or are you still waiting for comments or or what did that mean um we're not still waiting for additional comments um right. it's felt that we've had two structural reports submitted the first um dealt with the um the substructures and the second looked at um went beyond that um, and assessed the building in more detail. But the the content of the report is is vague. It doesn't explain um, why the building can't be renovated or what methods could be employed to retain some of it. We feel that there is insufficient detail in the report um, to be able to justify the demolition. Right. Thank you. Detail. Uh, thank you. Members, is there any hands going up? Any questions that you wanted to ask? Linda Chair, before, before we, you... if, could I interrupt? Sorry, it's Robert yep. Carmichael. Um, just to um, uh, just quickly raise a um, point that was um, we might have covered earlier is could we just confirm before we go any further whether Trevor Cresswell is um, sitting on the committee or um, or is attending to speak only as the ward member? Right. Uh, Councillor Cresswell. Um, uh, the, the, the point is, uh, you're, you're one of the two members for Sudbury, and uh, you have a right to decide whether you wish to be the ward member and have five minutes in which to address the committee, which you uh, would be invited to comment later on in it, or you could remain a member of the planning committee, which means that um, you can take part in the debate all the time. Uh, now, it's entirely up to you which way you wish to go. Um, Peter, I'd like to just stay a member of the committee. Thank you. That's fine. We do have your fellow um, Sudbury member, Councillor Jan Osborne, who um, will be speaking as one of the ward members. Um, but that will come up later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert, for reminding us. Uh, right, members. Uh, Somebody's got a hand up. I don't know if that was R Robert. Uh, it's myself. Sorry? It's me, Adrian oh. Osborne. Oh, right, right, Adrian. Okay, I don't know why it hasn't come up under your picture, but it hasn't on my screen. But anyway, well, yes, what's your point of clarification? It's up on my screen. Yeah, it, just to uh, Linda Bacon, really. Um, can she just, uh, has she, uh, the date that they show on here, how long has the this uh, been um, backwards and uh, forwards well how long has this been actually empty and yeah. uh, I'm correcting and assuming that it was from 2015 Linda, sorry I haven't uh, I'm do not you really know sure when what you're referring what you have in front of you they're referring to for two, 2015 but I believe all I want to know is how long has this building been empty? 
I think it probably has been empty since about 2015, 16. Yeah. I think it was empty at the time of the previous application. I believe, and I can't be 100% sure, but I believe that the the club and the hall finished or could be 10 years ago, but I think they had caretaker or somebody living in the building above on the Conservative Club part of it. And I think they were there until, perhaps, as you say, five or six years ago. I believe it's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And the other question is, uh, uh, Linda talks about red brick, etc. But on the um, town council um, council tea, they did ask for it to be uh, the brickwork and everything to be representative of the old Suffolk designs, etc., which was a, um, a white coloured brick, I believe. I'm not absolutely certain about that, but uh, they asked for that to uh, be be incorporated. So she, um, Linda keeps referring it to as red brick. So um, has that not been taken forward? Linda, is, the application is, uh, as it stands, it, it's still red brick. But okay, the, thank you. But the the local colours are a lighter colour, aren't they? Yes, the surrounding right. areas is is, is predominantly a, a gold brick, a white brick. Yeah, that's right. So the town, uh, the town, the town council did ask for that to be done. On, on, well, I, on. I think Councillor Osborne, you will have the opportunity to put that to the applicant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, any other points of clarification, members? Yes, Chair, please. Uh, Councillor Parker? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Could I just ask Linda to clarify? Um, which, so there is an extant permission on this site, um, I think. Uh, it was granted in 2017. So I I is that still live or has that lapsed? Is it about to lapse? What's the score there, please? The um, approval would have lapsed on the 3rd of August 2020 unless they have actually commenced that development. So without commencement, it will have lapsed. Third and commencement August. could be triggered by demolition work. So there's a possibility that it remains live, but say if it hasn't been commenced in any way, then it has lapsed. Thank you. Councillor Barrett. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know if you can answer this. Um, uh, has has uh, an app, any application been made to have it listed? It's, it's locally listed at the moment, but that's not the same as uh, as, as, uh, as applying for grade one or two. Oh, can you help on that or a heritage officer? I'm not aware. Perhaps Carolyn can help. Carolyn, can you answer that particular question for us, please? I I don't think it has been, um, I don't think there is any application to have it listed and I'm not sure if that was ever a plan to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barrett. Any other questions by anybody? I can't see any more hands at the moment. Uh, ch chair, sorry. Um, yeah. It's Mark Russell here. Mark. The, the, the permission would have lapsed, but the applicant does have... Um, dispensation to keep it alive because of the COVID extensions of time which were brought in this year. So oh, really? if they perform a paper exercise involving an environmental statement, I won't go into here, they could keep it alive for a bit longer. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Right. There's no uh yet yeah, no, there's no other questions. Then we're going to move on. Uh right. Public speakers. Uh, we don't have a representative from Sudbury Town Council or an objector or a supporter. Is that still correct? Yep, I'm taking that as yes. So I will now ask the agent to speak, Nick Cleesland. Uh, you have three minutes in which to address the committee. Are you there? Have we lost him, Rob? I'm just checking, Chair. Um, whilst we're doing that, Linda, would you mind taking the presentation off the screen? I think <coughs> Mark's somehow taking control of it as well. So there's um, uh, a few bits uh, going yeah, I was on. Trying, I, was <laughs> control, I was trying to then close it down and couldn't. Yeah, if you could stop sharing, Linda, thank you. Um, I'll just check on Mr. Peace. Mr. Peace and is here. Um, yes, he was here earlier. <laughs> there we oh, are. Oh, yes, I see him. Yeah. see you now. Yes. 
Can you okay. hear me now? The time hasn't started yet, so you're right. right. Can, you hear, can you hear me now? We can hear you, so oh. it's up to okay. you now. Rob, will you do the time and thank we'll you? Do, thank you. Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to, to address you this morning. We had hoped to be asking you today to make a site visit to see the condition and character of these buildings firsthand, but understand that you are not in a position to make such visits at this time. This application follows significant pre-application engagement with the Council's planning and heritage officers, and also follows a 2015 application for the conversion and alteration of these buildings to form five flats. Since that application was approved, it has become clear to us that conversion of the buildings is not viable, and this application instead identifies a viable way to redevelop these redundant buildings. We believe it is a well-designed and cohesive pr proposal that would regenerate this site and provide an enhancement to the area. The Town Council have agreed with the principle of what we are proposing for the site, subject to some minor changes to the design and materials. We've provided detailed structural information to justify why this proposal is the only viable way in which to regenerate this town centre site. It is recognised that there is a desire for more of the buildings to be retained, but we do not believe that this is either practical or, based on sound reasoning in terms of viab viability, possible. To be frank, it is clear that unless the re redevelopment of this site can be made viable and practical, it simply is not going to happen. It is noted that the government's recent planning white paper seeks to provide a quicker process for renewal areas where regeneration is necessary and where it would bring benefits. We consider that this is precisely the case here. The design retains the important facade of the building and the elements of the new build are of a scale and form that reflect adjacent development. The materials have been chosen to provide some interest to the street scene, clearly defining the old and the new. The accommodation provided is an appropriate mix for the accessible location. The site is allocated for, de for development in the local plan, and we'd, we believe the proposal meets with the requirements of policy SD08. The local plan states that this site can be redeveloped for housing, so nothing we are proposing is contrary to what the development plan expects. It simply comes down to an assessment of whether the works are sensitive to New Hall. We consider they are, and whilst we hear the views of some of the third parties, they have not been to site and certainly never entered the buildings. Their views must therefore be put into context. Little appears to have been made of the positive aspects of redeveloping this prominent site on an important through route in the town. Whilst we believe the proposal is in accordance with the Council's policies, we are in the process of seeking further supporting information to accompany the application and are proposing some amendments to the elevations to enhance the development further. These changes include suggestions made by the ward member, Councillor Jan Osborne, and the additional information would include costings and viability information that have been requested by the planning, planning officer. As such, we would politely request that this matter is deferred today to offer the planning officers the opportunity to take account of the additional information and design changes we propose to provide, and then bring this matter back to you once that information is available. We believe that a deferral of this item would allow more meaningful and informed consideration of the, pro pro of the proposal in due course. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I'll now see if there's any questions for you. I've, I've got one just to start. Uh, you said that you've submitted new designs and, and that. Um, is that correct? No, we haven't actually submitted them yet, but we'd like the opportunity to um, submit some design changes, uh, material changes, work with the, um, the, with the planning, planning officer, and also together with submitting a, a viability statement to support right. the application. Uh, and would some of these design improvements be the colours of the brickwork and things like that? What yes, absolutely. That, absolutely. I'll, I'll leave that for others to um, pick up. Um, Councillor Ayres, you've got a question. Yes, um, I'd be interested to know, um, in the Telegraph yesterday, it was the, um, Robert Jenrick, the Housing Secretary, suggesting that all new homes have at least one step free access. Would that be considered? Sorry, one. Can you repeat that last sentence? One step free access. One step free access. Oh, yes, absolutely. Home. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That would be incorporated. Thank you. Uh, any, any other questions? Uh, Councillor Parker. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, Nick. Um, 
I, I note your um, comments with regards to uh, the deferral, and that'll be something I'm sure that uh, members will will take into account um, in their debate. But um, in, in the uh, in the event that members are um, um, determined to determine the application, as it were, um, could you just tell me about that uh, design studio? Is is there a um, uh, is there a use planned for that at this stage? What and and, and what would that use be? Well, we thought it would, uh, when we say design studio, sort of gallery, art gallery, something like that. Um, there's nobody uh, lined up to take that at the moment, but it's an opportunity for somebody to um, to, to move into the building. Thank you. Um, could I could I just point out to to you um, uh, that the fact that I and perhaps uh, quite a few other members are well aware of this particular site. Um, certainly viewed it from the outside many times and know it very well. Um, so I'm not sure whether a site inspection would have helped. But over the years, I have certainly been inside the build and, and I know the Victoria Hall uh, was certainly um, uh, in need of uh, some urgent um, activity inside. Um, so I'm not sure whether the request for the site inspection was altogether necessary but um it is noted uh, that you did ask for that but you you understand the reasons why it can't happen at the moment yeah i fully understand um the reasons but it was more in, more to, to view the internals of the building rather right. than the externals because i think we feel it's important for 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 everybody involved to 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 see the condition right. uh, of the internal of the building thank you right i've got some others now uh councillor uh, Busby. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just uh, a quick thing. You've a lot of three story houses, so I'm not certain even if you've got a step free entrance, they'll be suitable for anybody that needs to access them in that way. And also, there's a lot of four bedroom, well, a lot, I mean, the majority are four bedroom houses, but there's only a maximum of two car parking spaces per uh, unit. Very, it looks very tight on car parking spaces and we know that part of Sudbury there aren't any other air, you know areas that you can really use so um, could there be a consideration to expand the number of pay, uh, spaces well the parking um, the parking um, that's been provided um, the highways have, have no objection with that they're happy with the numbers provided um, so yeah two spaces per unit is what would normally be asked for on a development like this. What, even on four bedroom properties? Mm, yes. Well, Thank I think you. we all know that two spaces for a four bedroom property probably isn't enough. Well, that's, the, part, that's the Upper County Council Highways parking requirement standards. And I think, uh, Councillor Busby, um, they're not far from North Street Car Park. And uh, we, we in Station Road, where we laid a conversion, uh, there was no parking provided and they had to use all the car parks there, which is really used in weight rows and what have you. Um, so there, there is other areas where they could park, but uh, I like you like to see parking on your on their own areas. But anyway, um, I've still got hands up for Sue Ayres and, and Councillor Barrett. So I'll go to Councillor Barrett. Thank you. Um, good morning, Nick. Um, can morning. You, can you just to explain the um, the process that you followed uh, in prior how you prioritized each of the three builds that are all uh, uh, appealing in different ways from a heritage point of view um, perhaps, perhaps you could talk us through that take, take one in third uh, um, councillor um, Barrett perhaps if you ask for the Victoria Hall then the Conservative Club and then the new hall Chair, I'm really sorry to interrupt and I apologise in advance, but Councillor Hinton has just dropped out of the meeting. Right, so we'll could freeze I please ask? the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, so don't answer that. We'll um, wait for him. Members and um, public, we're trying to get him back.
uh, we continue. And I think, um, in fairness, uh, Councillor Barrett, if you'd like to uh, put your question again to Nick, and then we'll take, carry on from there. This is still questions to the agent. Yes. Thank you. It's just interested to know how you had prioritised the three individual elements of the, the sort of heritage um, structures um, on the site, uh, as they all have different um, areas of appeal. Well, we prioritised the new hall building at the rear of the site yeah, because obviously that's been um, highlighted as being uh, something of uh, worthy of, of retention. Um, obviously, the application proposes demolition of a couple of the bays to the uh, to the Conservative Club end of that building, but the approach from Melford Road, you would see that building in its current form. Um, the the Conservative Club and the Victoria Hall. Um, if, if you had the opportunity of walking around internally within the building, you would be able to get to to consider and and and, um, and see why the, the buildings are, are just not worthy of conversion or possible of conversion. There's been so much work undertaken within those two buildings over the years, mm -hmm. walls removed, partitions knocked down, um, floors put in, that it's lost any sort of heritage importance over the um, over the past sort of 10, 15 years, really. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now I've got Councillor Ayers. Sorry, I haven't got my hand raised. Uh, your hand is still raised. Uh, Councillor Parker. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just want to strike me down if this question is out of order, Chair, but um, Nick has uh, suggested that the applicant would favour um, deferring this application. Now, it might be, of course, that this committee might be minded to um, uh, determine this application. Uh, we might be minded to go against officer's recommendation. So what is the applicant's um, preference, if that's a valid question? Um, defer or, or press ahead with um, with determination uh, against officer recommendation, if that was what members were minded to do? Well, we, we would prefer to defer so that we could um, address the additional information that we've been in discussion with uh, Linda Bacon uh, concerning sort of liability and, and additional statements and changes to the materials and minor design changes. Thank you. Councillor McCombe. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. Um, can I just check with what you were saying during your presentation? Yes. Did you say that the town can the town council actually supported? Yes, town council sort of agreed in principle what we were proposing for the site, subject to some minor changes to the design. Okay, thank you. So, but they're not here to support that, then, are they? No. Uh, today, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, there's no other hands up, so if there's no more questions uh, to him. Mary, your hand's still up, but uh, right, that's gone. There's no hands up, so I'm going to move on. Oh, Jay, uh, Councillor Gold. Yeah, so, sorry, Pish. Yep. I only just no, that's on. fine. Um, just a couple of points, really. One is that I know there's only one car parking space available for the design studio. I think in part, Councillor Busby's questions have received an answer to that. It's kind of more just, just a point that um, a design studio or an exhibition place that people would be expected perhaps to, to come to to see exhibitions um, that's only got one parking space. I just sort of raise that really. Um, and the other thing is, I, I don't know whether this is the point in the proceedings to, to raise this, but do we know what the local community thinks? I mean, Councillor McLaren has just said that... Um, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, Councillor Gold. Um, at this point, it's questions to the applicant. Okie doke. Um, that question can go to the officers uh, in debate. I will keep that one tucked under my hat for the approach. If you wanted to rephrase it somehow as a question to the applicant, you can do it. Oh, can I do that? How's my mental agility? Um, Has had any support? Yes, indeed. So, applicant. <laughs> I, wonder, Nick, I wonder, Nick, whether the proposals have had any support um, from the... Uh, uh, Councillor McLaren says that the, yeah, the, the town council haven't sent a representative, but um, has there been any support? 
Yes, there has. Um, the, the general community are, are supportive of, of the application. The site is, um, is a bit of an eyesore and has been for some time now um, and just is in desperate need of, of redevelopment and regeneration. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and in response to, um, has there been any um, sort of feasibility as to whether only one parking space is sufficient for the design uh, and exhibition part of the new hall? Well, it would ne not necessarily be a, an art gallery. It's only quite a small unit, so it'd be more like an artist or a, a you know somebody working from there at, at as out of a studio rather than an exhibition uh, centre because it's a it's quite a small unit. I mean, it's in a very sustainable location, and 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 as the chairman pointed out earlier on in the presentation, I mean there are public car parks, uh, many of them in and around the the town. Um, so yeah, I mean it's a sustainable, accessible um, location um, served by uh, railway and um, and bus routes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Right. Uh, I can see no hands up now. So with that, members, I intend to move on. So thank you, uh, Mr. President, and uh, we'll move on to. The ward member, Councillor Jan Osborne. Do you, do you, you have five minutes in which to address the committee? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, members. Uh, the site referred to in this application has been standing empty for several years and has become a real eyesore in Sudbury. Members, there is an opportunity with this application to at long last improve the appearance of this site, both for residents and visitors to our town. The application states that the Victoria Hall, the Conservative Club and New Hall are on the local list. But apart from the bay windows and the large cast iron plaque, there is no real significant value compared to the benefits of this development would bring to the town. No. To quote part of the listing, the lower story has become very cluttered and the soft red brick generally is in poor condition. Secondly, it needs a sympathetic new owner. Indeed, in my view, this application is sympathetic to both the area and the site. I understand that the applicant is prepared to look at keeping the bays or a similar replacement on the first floor as part of a revised design, along with some other cosmetic changes to the new build elevations. Prior to the application coming to committee, I did request a site visit be arranged so that the extent of the damage to the building can be taken into consideration. This did not take place and I am concerned that members are being asked to make a judgment without seeing the interior of the building as the exterior does not portray how bad the inside is and that the comments by the heritage officer are financially unviable for the applicant. This being the case, I would appreciate the committee giving consideration to deferring a decision to enable a site visit by members to be scheduled, possibly by using technology. Could I also bring to members' attention the response from Sudbury Town Council to quote, I prove in principle with this development, Town Council has felt that the proposed brickwork that faces directly onto New Street should be sympathetic and in keeping with the existing street scene for example, white buff brick and slate tiles. They also felt that the proposed design of the properties on the existing Conservative Club should resemble the site history, unquote. Of course, I am sympathetic to the views expressed with reference to the history of these buildings, but a balance between this and the benefits of the application is key to your decision. And I'm confident that the members will see that the balance is on the side of the benefits and far outweighs any heritage concerns. Mm -hmm. If this application is not given approval, there is a risk that the site will remain in its current rundown state for many more years to come. If the application is not deferred, I strongly request that members give this application due consideration about the benefits that will come from this application, rather than trying to protect a building that is already in a state of bad disrepair. Thank you, Mr Chairman. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see if there's any questions to, to you. Um, Councillor Gold, you've got your hand up. Sorry, I just hadn't raised it, Chair. Oh, sorry, I just hadn't lowered it. I will lower it. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any questions to the ward member? No. 
Thank you. Then we'll move on. Uh, right, we'll now open up the item for debate. So it's over to you, members. Uh, again, I'd remind you to use the uh, hands up function. But just to kick off, I'll, oh, somebody has got a hand up. I can see somewhere. That, that's me, Chair. It's Mark Russell. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sorry, yeah. Chair. It's, it's knowing when to sort of um, speak up in between the bits of the debate. Um, I've, I'm going to ask our heritage officer just to give a few words about the um, the merits of the buildings, just to explain to members why they're locally listed and, and what's important about them. Um, and I would also at some point like to remind members of the duties under the NPPF and the Listed Buildings Act. May I do that now? Um, well, or yes. We, um, it, it could come up during the debate. Um, OK, all right. I'll do that later. That might be better. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll see if there's any uh, who, who wants to start. I'll go to Councillor Ayers uh, first and then the hands might come up after that. Councillor Ayers. Um, no, nothing to say at the moment, but as a town councillor, I totally support everything that Councillor Osborne said. Th thank you. Um, councillor Barrett? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I was going to just refer back to that, that point I was going to raise earlier. Um, in the report on page 26, uh, there's a, about the or fifth paragraph down. It says Baber local plan states in paragraph 7.47. Where is that? Is that in Seven four, this yeah, document? Uh, I don't think it's this document they're referring to. Um, Mark, can you help out on that on page 26? Um, halfway down, the Baber local plan. I think it's paragraph in the local yeah. plan. I may ask the author if she can um, respond to that. Right, sorry. Perhaps I can help. Um, yeah. It is the um, 2006 local plan and it's in the um, conservation section. So 2006? It's yes, it's the previous local plan, not the core strategy. So it's one of the texts that supports the conservation policies. Right. Don't even have that. No, that's no, a long time ago. Right. Um, well before my time. So um, uh, also I just wondered if I could ask Linda while you're you're on the, the uh, sort of on the line. Um, how are these buildings on the at risk register? Um, I don't believe they're on the at risk register because that would be for um, listed buildings. These are locally listed, not statutory listed. Right. OK. And do you think there is a reason why they haven't been, uh, an application hasn't been made for them to be listed? Is it because of the poor condition inside and the, the already already sort of um, uh, lost a lot of the heritage aspects of the interiors? Um, I don't think I could really comment on why they haven't been listed because that's dealt with outside of the council. But maybe Carolyn would be able to give you more insight as to how often they review buildings for for listing. I think at this point we will go to Carolyn and ask her to comment on the heritage side because uh, that's part of your question. Yeah. Mm. Hi. Yes, thank you. Um, in terms of its listing, I think the changes that have happened internally likely have something to do with the fact why it's, it wasn't um, considered uh, listable at the time that buildings were being listed in Sudbury, um, as well as it might just not be rare enough to be nationally uh, protected, but because they still have a, um, a presence in the street scene, they have connections to um, so the social life in Sudbury and the community, I think that's why they were put on the uh, on the local list. And um, also being in the conservation area, they do contribute to um, the character of the area. They use local materials. And uh, despite the having been standing empty and the, the windows now being boarded up, um, they had some very nice um, uh, sort of aesthetic details. Um, and it's in, in scale, they, they fit in into the character of, of that area very well. Um, so I think it's both the ties to the community and sort of the local uh, local materials as well as aesthetic uh, qualities uh, that have made it on onto the local list. 
Thank you, thank you. I've got you, Lee. But uh, just following on from this, um, Mark, did you want to make any comments on this part of it? I was just going to remind members of the statutory duties under the MPPF and the, and the List of Buildings Act at some point, Chair. Um, it's, yeah, it's you do it now. OK, yeah. Um, paragraph 201, 201 of the MPPF, which is on page 57, um, right towards the end of the conservation section, um, states loss of a building or other element and obviously in this case we're talking about a loss of a whole building loss of one building apart from its front and then the loss of part of another building new hall so the loss of a building or other element which makes a positive contribution to the significance of the conservation area which these all do they're locally listed um, sh should be treated either as substantial harm which is what it is if you're not going to build it down um, or less than substantial well it's substantial harm as appropriate, taking into account the relative significance of the element affected and its contribution and significance to the conservation area. So um, Carolyn has just explained how the buildings contribute to the conservation area. Um, their loss, uh, they, they are seen as positive elements, albeit that they are tired in some places. Um, they are locally listed, therefore their loss would be considered substantial harm. So we have to really very carefully weigh up the benefits and disbenefits. Um, um, sorry. Yes. Uh, well, all I was going to say on that substantial harm or less than substantial harm, yeah. is that your interpretation of that particular uh, paragraph you've read out it, or it, is that a it, fact? Well, it refers us to, to, to paragraph 195, um, yes. which describes how it would consider harm and uh, it left different levels of harm. Yes, uh, but so you could have taken the less than substantial harm, but you feel it is um, substantial harm. Is that correct? Well, if you get then go to the first bit of 195, it says where a proposed event will lead to substantial harm or total loss of significance of a designated heritage asset, uh, we should refuse consent. Um, however, obviously these are locally listed, so you, you, your grading goes down a bit, but you could qualify it because it's in a conservation area as being substantial harm. But that 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 is open to interpretation because they're not listed. That, that so was the point I just wanted to be clear on. Yeah. Fine. And, and the, other, the other point, sorry, was, was paragraph 72 of the... Um, Listed Building and Conservation Areas Act. So this is our statutory duty as, as a planning authority. Um, decision takers should be mindful of the specific legal duties of the local planning authority with respect to special attention, which shall be paid to the desirability of preserving or enhancing the character and appearance of the conservation area. So in other words, whatever we decide today, were we to go for the approval, we have to be happy that what's going in the place of what we're losing is, is better. And that's the second half of the debate, really. We're looking at how good the design might be of the replacement buildings. That, that was all, Chair. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you very much. Councillor Barrett? I would just come back with a you know, comment that I think there is substantial harm. I would agree with that because you're losing it. But I think doing nothing is also harmful to the these buildings because, not, uh, you know, there, there'll be no investment, there'll be no repair, upkeep, and they will slowly decline and become incredibly sad. Uh, and and as we say, they're already in a bit of an eyesore. So this is a, di a very difficult balance that we we've, we've got to achieve. And um, and I'm trying to trying to um, uh, get 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 some. Um, uh, understanding of the real significance of these buildings. I think that's that's really crucial to this. Thank so I'll be interested to hear what else others say. Thank you. Councillor Parker? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. And I, I absolutely concur with everything that um, Councillor Barrett has said there. And um, thank you also to Mark for, for giving some explanation. So we can get some context, Chair. Is there any chance we could share? Um, I think it's slide 13 onwards, I think, which are the uh, which are the street scenes. Can yes, we... that's correct. 13, 14 through to 18. Yeah, no, that's that's what I had. Are we able to put those back on the yes, screen? Yes, I can ask the officer to put them up. We'll share the screen. And I think you can still talk over it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, right, Chair. So, uh, you, you know, so this provides the context, um, in in my opinion, that uh, when I was reading the report over the weekend, um, you know, my initial thoughts as I was reading through this is going to be extremely difficult to do anything other than go with the officer's recommendation um, because um, of the requirements that we have with regards to the MPPF and, and um, uh, conservation area, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
but but this is our alternative um is if if we go with the officer's recommendation we're stuck with this um and um i i struggle to um to to understand or to be able to justify how uh retaining this in its current form um uh, assists and if we can stop on that slide particularly to, um um slide 18 if we can just or that one yeah whichever um but but yes i struggle to justify how uh, retaining this for another period of time uh, you know for a length of time we know not how long for um enhances this area at all i mean it's just getting worse and worse and worse um and and interestingly if we look at this streetscape here now i know you know the officers will say well two wrongs don't make a right um but there's an awful lot of wrongs that have occurred here um uh, over, over the years um and and um, i'm not suggesting for one second that globe yard which is the modern uh, property shown on the right hand side there flats i'm not suggesting that that in any way shape or form is an ugly building but i'm not sure either that in in enhanced or preserved the character of um of of the area um at the time so i i'm not i'm not there's there's, there's a couple of issues here i'm not a fan of of deferments chair as you know um, but I'm, I'm actually thinking that under the circumstances, uh, Councillor Osborne's um, suggestion and indeed the applicant's suggestion to defer this might actually be uh, an opportunity for us to um, just take stock um and and come back and see what improvements can be made and whether they can um you know whether they can satisfy our officers in in any way um chair can I leave that there yeah, I think we would have to also give some suggestions as to what we feel they may have to look at or come back and discuss with our officers. I don't think we could just defer it and, and leave them to talk to officers. I think we've got to give them some ideas of what we're perhaps wanting or perhaps what we think might be an improvement or we we'll just take the brick, the colour of the bricks for argument, um, which seems quite simple and straightforward. If we could have them more in keeping white ones, uh, would they can they would uh, we would want that to be considered very seriously. Uh, so I think you could go for the deferment, but you've got to have um, some sort of a reason for what you want the officers and the agent to concentrate on. But members, I think you just need to bear that all in mind. Uh, I've got Councillor Adrian Osborne. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yes, I, I concur with the, the comments of uh, Councillor Barrett and, and that of uh, Lee Parker. What I would like to say is if you put the um, uh, view of the uh, area you'll notice that there was a, a piece of land that was part of St Gregory's Church, which were like prefab things on there. Well, now that's now been done as housing. And as um, uh, Councillor Parker has said, the Globe uh, Court across the road from it is, is modern as well. I can't see how that impacts on, on getting something done on, on a development which is run down now for many years. And I think most of the councillors that are on this committee have seen over the years areas that have just gone on and gone on and nothing has happened. Mm. Uh, and we can all we can all list those those areas. Uh, and again, I'm you know I'm in favour of of getting something done to make it look compliant with what we've got there, but also to make a use of land which is really required. And if, if we do, if, if members do uh, put a proposal forward to, to go to deferment, I would, I would very much like to have what was suggested by um, Nick Peasland, that we should be looking at the internal side of that building uh, in terms of uh, whether it is done on a virtual basis or a, um, or a if you like, an offices there. Well, I, I would like to see I would like to see the internal st structures of that building. And I've no doubt that over the years that has deteriorated to a point where you've got to do something about it. And looking at the, and looking at the silk stuff, although I'm very much involved with, uh, uh, with, with the want of, of, of seeing Sudbury strive on with their silk industry, that has never been used since I've been in Sudbury. And longer than that, perhaps you know yourself, Mr. Chairman, uh, as any... Um, um, manufacturing p positions of silk. So 
again what you know what are you going to do with that area with that terrible fencing it looks it looks atrocious it is an eyesore and you know Sudbury cannot in my opinion have many more of these going on because you 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 just it detracts from the whole position of having employment and um uh, retail actually come into Sudbury thank you well the decision is within your hands members so uh, but i can remember the victoria hall and i'm going back to the, perhaps the year 2000 and just after uh, where it was flooded on the inside there was water at the bottom uh, where the old stage used to be and that was then but anyway um i've got two more people now councillor busby followed by councillor mclaren tricky one uh, when I've arrived visit Sudbury, it's primarily because of the, the heritage and the interesting architecture of the of the buildings. If we start losing these buildings, where individually they probably don't stack up as being anything significant, but as a collective, then they do give uh, the idea of what the past was like for Sudbury, how it grew up, why it was important. So I think it's difficult to start knocking these things down and losing them. Having said that, I've also been in favour of converting buildings into residential in town centres for years, because I think that's the future. My concern here with this particular development is, I guess, is on two fronts. One is I think it's probably overdevelopment. There's a lot of big houses in such a small space and I, I can understand why they've done it, but I think slightly less would give you more. Mm. And I think it's, it is important, if we can, to retain some of the, the detail of those buildings if they are going to be knocked down, like the two-tone of the walls, you know, the front wall and the, back, and the side wall of the hall. We should try and retain some of this heritage stuff. It is important for Sudbury. What is Sudbury without its history? If you start just putting random three-storey blocks of houses up in the middle of the town, then you'll lose it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the, the revised plans will be. But my key message to the developer is less will deliver more. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just, uh, I used to work in Sudbury years ago, so I've got a soft spot for Sudbury, but I am an outsider. And at this time of looking to Sudbury to develop its economic uh, businesses and we're in a recession, if you visit and pass these buildings, they really are a poor representation mm. of what is a very active and busy little town. And I think we should bear that in mind when we make our decision. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, anybody new wishes to speak? Uh, no, Councillor Busby hasn't put his hand down. Uh, Chairman, um, I've got my hand up. Councillor Hinton. Unless the broadband's playing up and de deleting my hand. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I agree with a lot of what's, what's been said by various people, but I think what we've got to consider is that we shouldn't regard letting a heritage asset deteriorate as a reason for knocking it down. Um, the fact that it's deteriorated is deplorable. Uh, but it, it doesn't mean to say we should knock it down. I think the design that is being proposed for the southern boundary of the site of the Conservative Club area um, is completely out of context with that part of Sudbury. I admit that just around the corner, it's probably what might be called fast food city, because every single outlet along there seems to be a fast food outlet. Uh, but um, there's a certain character to that part of town that would be lost completely. If we are going to defer this, I think we, are we have got to be very clear as to why we're deferring it. What I would rather see is that we uh, go with the officer's recommendation and that we give the applicant a clear 
steer as to what he needs to resubmit because let's face it he can resubmit without a fee uh, having had a refusal and hopefully he will then liaise with the various bodies in Sudbury and come up with something that is more appropriate to that area because I think the building of four bedroom houses in the middle of town like that is not something that we would require when we often see two bedroom homes being proposed in the middle of the countryside well what is more logical or illogical two bedroom homes in the middle of the countryside or four bedroom homes in the middle of the town we've got to put what is needed where it's needed and not uh, just put something in because it might produce a better return on the development of the site thank you um any other comments members councillor barrett yes i think we're we're moving forward aren't we um there seems to be a real desire to retain the the exterior elements of this and, and it's difficult to comment on the interior so um but but i i wonder whether there is a uh, that option that the development could retain the um the uh exterior on new street which is the front the the gray brick white brick frontage um if that's not if that's not possible from a practical point of view, can't it be rebuilt as a a very very close replica to that? That's after all was what's happened in Friar Street on the site where the the fire was in Sudbury, and it's incredibly popular. People really have have um, been very proud of it. Um, it's been very successful, um, and um, I I think that is that is an option for me. Um, it retains the um, the 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 feel of the heritage area the the conservation area while at the same time you uh, some benefit from you know um the the work behind it that uh, is modern modern building methods um so that for me would allow this to be more acceptable if we retained the look of the frontage on the new street thank you uh councillor gold uh yeah um, I, I agree with Councillor Barrett and Councillor Hinton. Um, I did take a trip to Sudbury yesterday and had a look at the outside of these buildings, and I do agree they are an eyesore, but I'm not sure that just because something looks an eyesore um, that it's right to necessarily demolish it um, and to lose the heritage um, that, that those buildings have. It was interesting, I don't know which slide it was, and I wouldn't be suggesting that we see the slide again necessarily, but there was one slide that the officer showed that had got the conservative building, um, she'd superimposed the windows on the bottom so that we could see what it used to look like or what it could look like, I think probably what it used to look like with its windows intact, because any building is going to look unloved and derelict the minute you put the boards up. Um, and I just, I, I agree with you, Councillor, about I just think um, to retain something of, of the character. I mean, the facade is being kept for the Victoria Building, isn't it? The Victory Hall. Um, I'm not a builder. I wouldn't be suggesting that necessarily the facade was kept, that something of the character um, of the Conservative Club there along that street, I just feel is important. And to demolish it just because it's an eyesore and to put up something that is going to have lost the heritage of those buildings that can never be can never be returned once something is demolished and the heritage is gone that's it isn't it thank you mr chair thank you thank you councillor osborne yeah, thank you mr chairman um yes i'd just like to just to come back uh, on Mel melanie barrett's um, position there um if i'm correct the developer has already stated that it is not viable to actually um, carry out uh, a restructure of all of that as it stands. They have already given um, the town council a steer in terms of that uh, they would be expecting to retain the frontage and obviously the windows, the bay windows, etc. in there and also uh, go with the same type of brickwork etc so i'm you know if it's not going to be viable uh, whatever happens you are going to have a piece of uh, so-called listed locally listed um, uh, property that will remain like that forever and because no other developer will have 
have the monies in there to do that. I agree with uh, Councillor Busby um, that perhaps it, it is too much in terms of uh, uh, the amount of flats there. However, uh, you know, they have to produce that financial uh, business plan for to, to obviously get the um, heritage stuff that they've said that they would um, uh, rebuild. So I'm sorry, but I, I, f I feel, you know, as a Sudbury person uh, for the last 20 odd years, that we are going in a downward spiral. And if we do not get the the, the stuff back to, to a good position in terms of uh, uh, tourism and in terms of uh, people coming into the town, footfall, etc. cetera. Um, John Hinton refers to the North Street as um, uh, takeaway city. Well, <laughs> he's quite right there. But however, that still impacts on heritage stuff. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss to understand why we cannot get a, a good uh, application in with a developer that is, is proposing uh, good changes and keeping as much of that heritage site as possible. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I, you know, if it's not viable, it's never going to happen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask Linda, can you tell us, um, because I felt Councillor Osborne brought up a good point there, the, the facade and the white bricks and that sort of thing, which he seems to think that the, the applicant has accepted what the town council has said. Do we have any evidence of that, um, Linda, uh, in your discussions, or are we still solely just looking at the plans that are before us, or are there th these improvements in the wings? Can you help us? Yes, Chair. Um, we are looking at the plans that are currently before us. Yeah. However, as of, I believe it was Monday, I did receive an email from the um, the agent to say that they would like opportunity to consider making some changes and had some suggestions to how to improve the elevations and they were also suggesting they could provide us with the, some financial costings which has so far been missing from the the submission to support what they um, they propose to do so we we have had a very recent offer to provide additional information to us and hence the request for deferral right well there's no hands up um so i'm um, I think from the chair, I'm going to propose. Chair, chair. Sorry? Yeah. Councillor Creswell has got his hand up. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I can't see that at all anywhere. Let me try and scroll down, see whether that helps. Uh, well, I, I'm not disbelieving you. Councillor Creswell, would you like to uh, comment? You're not. Yes. You're still Hello, chair. Sorry, yeah. I was on mute. Um, what I would say, uh, reference to deferment, I, I sort of agree with Janet. Um, to beat Jan Osborne, um, let's be honest, uh, the place has stood uh, almost empty for 10 years, and, and I don't think a few more months is going to make a major amount of difference to get it right rather than to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, again, yes, I, I've, I've been to Victoria Hall many a time, but let, let's be realistic here. We've got a, a building and including the Conservative Club that hasn't been used for ages and ages. Um, and, I, and I think uh, something's got to be done with the land and people don't come along with the money to do the work needed. Um, and here we have an opportunity. Yes, I think there's certain things, like Dave Busby said, may be too many, but at the end of the day, like any developer, they have to make money from a development. Let's be realistic. Mm. Um, but I, I, th I think if it's not done, it, it could stand there for another 20 years before we go back and revisit it. So I do, I do think we have to look at the big picture. It is an eyesore. It stood there for many, many years. Um, and, and something obviously needs to be done with that piece of land and building. Thank you. Uh well, I totally agree with a lot of your comments there. So I'm going to make a recommendation from the chair that we uh, defer this. Chair, item. chair. Oh, sorry. I put my hand up, if you don't mind. Ah, yes, I can see your hand. I beg your pardon. Well, uh, Councillor Plum. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can also have somebody who's been associated with Sudbury for over 60 years. 
I think they'll out trumped one or two more. And having driven past this site many times, I, I am somewhat concerned that if we allow them to knock down any of these facades, then we've lost them, uh, just as Dave Busby was saying. So I would much rather hear some suggestions if they've got some um, by a referral than just plowing ahead and saying that for the sake of um, another few months that we can't have something that's far more acceptable to us all. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm going to come in here. I can see your hand, Mark, but I'm I'm, uh, I'm thinking that uh, deferral seems to be um, what members are minded to go for. Uh, so I'm going to propose a defer, uh, deferral that we go back to the applicant uh, with some of the comments that we've mentioned, uh, find out uh, whether there is any merit in um, reducing the numbers or making them smaller or increasing the park and or um, the colour of the bricks and design and the cost of all these. So I, I need a seconder. I will second that chair. Thank you, Councillor Plum. Do you wish to make any comment? Not at this stage, no. Right. Now, Mark, I'll let you in. Sorry. Yes, Chair. I mean, there, there are two sides to the debate and obviously we've heard a lot about the demolition. Um, I was wondering if Linda could just put the presentation up again so we could see what's been proposed because there were elements of the design that our heritage officer wasn't happy with, which were um, more, more need more than minimal changes. For example, the, the bulky roof um, on the right hand side element, that sort of thing. So if you're asking for a deferral, I think we need to be clear what yep. you want us to do afterwards. And I'd have to say that the first thing that we need really is a is a proper appraisal of the building and a viability assessment, which would justify the removal of, of the buildings, if that's what they're going to go for. If they're not going to knock the buildings down or going to knock down less and keep the facades up, that does change the balance. So we need to know what you're asking us to do. Right. Can start Adrian Osborne? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm all for the deferment if it's going to improve the position of, uh, of getting something done on that site. Uh, also, I would just like to say that whatever whatever we do here for, for the um, uh, not a site visit as such, but the internal structures of that building should be brought to us so we can see exactly the extent of the damage and the and the problems that have been caused over the years uh, and with the same position as, as yourself, um, if we don't, and, and that of Trevor Creswell, in fact, right. is that if nothing gets done, it could be another 20 years before you're actually going to have anybody with the finance to, to actually be able to do anything with that site. Thank you. If we can't get a site inspection quite quickly, because I don't think this should go on for too long, can we have photographs taken of the interior? Uh, so that they can support the arguments one way or the other. Uh, that might be helpful. Um, the size of the the building or the, the roof tiles, I think that was an area of concern, wasn't it, um, Mr. Russell? Yeah, If if uh, uh, can we have the drawing up? I mean, it's the second part of the discussion. Is the replacement, do we like the replacement? Um, and there was the element behind, I think it was the Conservative Club part of it, where there was a a bulky roof added in, wasn't there, Linda? Which Carolyn did object to. That's right. We can we can point these out to the applicant, and then he can make comments yeah. on them or um, changes as he feels necessary. But I think members, we have to be realistic that there is a cost to all this, and if you want something done at the end of the day, there may have to be give and take on both sides. Linda. Uh, Councillor Busby, while we're waiting. Thank you. Uh, personally, I'm not too concerned about retaining the inside. I don't know the inside, so I don't know how important that is. It's, I think it's the exterior, to me, that's important. I think the Victoria Hall particularly, we need to keep. Uh, New Hall has a, a history, a good history. The, the fence needs to come down. We need to make good use of the... the layout of that and I think the design that they're talking about is working towards that. Um, as for the um, Tory club, well, demolishing. I mean, <laughs> it should have been demolished a hundred years ago. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll, we'll take that with a pinch of salt, Councillor Busby. 
Uh, right, Linda, are you uh, capable of coming in? See now the um, the elevations in front of you. It's the one at the top on the left hand side. Is that's right where your arrow was? So on the left hand side, um, and I'd probably ask for Caroline to chip in as she sees fit. But from my point of view, this roof here doesn't sit too comfortably because of the um, the little half gables um, mm -hmm. and hips on the end. Um, it's a it's quite a bit higher the building behind here um, and the materials we've got red brick and red tiles um, that's on the, uh, the print street side so and then turning the corner on to uh, just to stop you there so that we're clear the front bit yes I can understand where the argument is there but the building behind in fairness that is the one in the the picture next to it the right hand side and they're basically all the same size as the new new build or what I, i've forgotten what it was called there so i i think that could be misleading if we just look at it from that front view um yes there is some perspective to take yeah. into account here yeah. um, but i certainly think the low part yes that don't look quite right uh but are the slates and, and tiles and that all different on those two um see there yes we've got yeah. clay plain tiles here and um the annotations missing but i, le but I believe that slate behind right. i believe these so, um, pictures here are slate improved. yeah so then turning round the corner onto um new street and the replacement for the conservative club it's the mix of materials here as well as some of the um design features because we've got red brick mm -hmm. and then red cedar cladding that's horizontally applied then render then vertical um red cedar cladding and more red brick and it's um a red but tile roof and then slate so there's too much of a muddle there a personal opinion i don't like all that re uh, rendering or or um and the cedar cladding the cladding. Mm. typically you'd have black weather boarding there's a, an area of black boarding on the um the former mill next door yeah, that's right, um, yeah, that's called. and it's some of the, the the proportions here um from my perspective this little um gable mm -hmm. feature at the top uh together with the um the height of these because bearing in mind this was formerly a gap in the conservation area and is now being built um on by a, a three-story dwelling um doesn't sit comfortably in that context but perhaps carolyn might like to add further on well we should never have allowed the mill, mill house one then if we feel like that but anyway that's a point of view mm -hmm. um yes do you mind if i yes uh, elaborate a little bit the um the mill building is a is a historic building i believe so that is that has its place in the in in the conservation area but yes like um like linda says there's putting there's there's a lot of gaps which would be filled up by um by three-story buildings that will definitely have an impact on the on on the street view and the variety of materials and styles together is very busy and um contrasts with um what is a very quite quite simple um, street view that is there right now with um, with the white the white bricks and as as you look down further onto New Street as well there are smaller cottages um, with a, a little bit of render and a little bit of the the white brick as well so for it to sit more um, harmoniously um, and not uh, contrast as much um, I would I would recommend less less variety in in the elevations. Right. So just so we can follow this through, the the roof in um, um, there, uh, is that, um, what, what, that's Princess Street, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The roof there, uh, we'd like them to re-look at that. The uh, variety of materials on the front, which was the old Conservative Club, which is New Street, we'd like them to look at the variety of the different materials they're using too many of them uh possibly the height of the um that, those two buildings there um, and see what their views are on that their things are picked up at the moment 
Um, members, is there anything else? Dave Busby, you've got your hand up. Yeah. Um, if you look at the, the top right hand picture of, on that slide, you've got the, the two three yeah. story buildings. I mean, firstly, I think it would be better if they A, weren't three story and B, there was only one of them. But if you're going to keep the three story, could you not use one single apex for your roof, which would then mirror the Victoria Hall on the left hand side? Good point. And would lower the roof height as well. That's another suggestion that can be put forward. Uh, obviously, the applicant's uh, listening in, so he can hear that comment. Uh, any other comments by members? I can't see any hands. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Osborne. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just um, like to make comment about uh, the, 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 something that Dave Busby mentioned, Councillor Busby mentioned, and that is that degradation always works from the inside out. So therefore, whatever you're gonna, whatever bad uh, bad um, demolition is required for inside the building, obviously is going to go to the outside, and you know. You always you always get that it goes from inside to out. So it's important that we get a view of what is inside those buildings. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Barrett. Thank you. Um, I I I don't for me I don't want to tinker with the the, the modern design because no. I want to see the exact same design as the Conservative Club is currently, um, because I think it, it as, as we say, we um, we uh, we respect it and um, want to retain that. So I my suggestion is that um, that is uh, conditional, um, that the design is the same. Well, um, could we could we not uh, suggest that they look at retaining some of the features of the uh, existing Conservative Club in their new build? I think that does open it up that they could try and put in bay windows and all the other things uh, yeah. that, that are there and the colour bricks and what have you. Yeah, uh, that be acceptable to you. I think so. I I, yeah, okay. I I just think it's the the right scale. Uh, the features are nice. It's quite fine actually, um, and 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 um, and but actually, on a little point, um, these are two story. The houses on the opposite side of the street and further down uh, this street, they are all three story. Three uh, yeah. Councillor Busby. Yeah. Yes, they so are. That is, that is quite consistent with the mm. whole street scene. We are concentrating on looking up the street, but down that street, they're nearly all, you can just see on the corner of that hat, that, that yeah. one on the right hand side, That's they're all three cool. story yeah. um, because Weaver's, um, Weaver's cottages were three story so that they could have more light allowed into the, the upper floors. I, I think the point that Councillor Busby made about having the one pitch over the two. Uh, would be helpful, I think. So, so I think there's lots of opportunities for the applicant to look at, and the suggestions that you're putting forward. Um, hopefully, uh, Rob or somebody is picking these up uh, for us. Uh, yeah. This could be because I, I appreciate that um, the sort of collaborative style of. Um, getting councillors opinions on this but if we could because it is yours and councillor plum's proposal yep. could we just clarify the reasons that we've got specifically so far yep. um and mm -hmm. then go from there because of um just so that we've, we've we're picking these up as we go along so mark I've, i guess that you've been taking these down uh, as well i've mentioned some things which i'm not sure went through to the chair so i just want to check i mean the, the things yep. i mentioned were that we need um a structural justification and also a viability statement about why the demolition is the optimum solution where there could be a conversion, which obviously we have already given permission for at some stage. So so that needs to be justified. We need right. that. Framework. And, and moving forward from that, if that's if that's done, fine. Um, and then we look at the design issues that you've brought up. And Councillor Barrett has mentioned that the, the facade should be preserved, um, even if the one on the right hand side, the Conservative Club bit has to be rebuilt. She wants it to be like that. So so that's that's the second thing I think has been requested. 
Well, uh, w w my um, point was there was a variety of ma of materials being used along yep. uh, there, and if that resulted in uh, re rebuilding uh, the front in a similar form and that's acceptable, then that's fine. That can come back to us. Um, but I think that's all that Councillor Barrett has asked them. Um, yes. it, it, it's, we want to know their views on whether they could do that, whether they could make that viable, whether that would work from their point of view. Um, from, from my perspective, Chair, as, as officers, it, it's, it's feeling a little bit like not a, it doesn't feel like a committee resolution. It feels like a, a different, it feels like maybe some pre-application advice we're talking about here or some other sort of discussion um the, the things you're asking for make it a different application effectively should, should we come should they come back with a different application rather than keep this one running uh well i i would hope that they'll come back with a, a fresh application uh picking up all the points that members have mentioned so, so, uh, and, so procedurally. and where they can uh, uh um you, you know take on board some of those yeah. concerns but but my concern was that procedurally are you asking for this application to stay open um or should we look at the refusals so that the applicant then has 12 months no i'm not asking for us to refuse it i don't think that um right. would be the right way to go forward then we have uh, to be very clear about what we're asking at this point sorry then that we have to be very clear about what the um what the if, resolution is at this point yeah well the resolution is to go back and have discussions with the applicant uh on a variety of um points which we've listed uh pointing out that we'd like the structural uh survey done um and uh looking at the roof roofs seeing whether they can um do something uh with a rebuild of the we'll refer to it as the old conservative club part uh, keep as near as possible to what was there. Um, Councillor Plum. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mark, can I just clarify that if we send it back for deferral yeah. that, and you start discussions with the agent, yeah. um, are we in a situation if the agent then feels he'd like to submit a new application, what, what would the situation be? Because the application has been going for, I think it's 11 months now, uh, the way it works, oddly, with planning is if you withdraw a planning application, you have 12 months from the date that you submitted it to get a free go. So they'd only have one month left if they withdrew. So to be kinder to them, uh, um, counterintuitively, a refusal would be better for them, um, better than withdrawing. However, if, if members want to stay with this application reference and negotiate within that reference, then, then we'll, we'll do what you ask. But it, it may be that we come. What comes back is quite different to what's here. But that that is that's your prerogative. Yeah. Well, that that's fair enough. So we, we some of us don't like what is here, and and so something different might be more acceptable. Um, Councillor Osborne. Yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I concur with your your previous uh, comments that you made uh, just just now. Uh, but I also would like to point out. That Sudbury Town Council has actually asked for this in this application. So, you know, why aren't we actually, uh, why are we still stating that uh, we've got all these changes to do with the uh, structural side of it, when in fact, if they've taken on board what was said by the Town Council, who actually live with this every day of the week, why, why isn't that been considered already? And I did pick up from two or three members uh, during the course of the debate that there were benefits that they felt outweighed the harm. So there, there is that, that, that there are benefits to, to this. Right. Whether these are the right benefits, we don't know yet. Absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. The, the town council did speak favourably in, in the way you suggest with the changes, but the the heritage specialists all, yeah. all opposed it. So that's... Yeah. There's the balance. Well, the, that, that's the balance. That's a different point of view. Uh, right, members, I think we need to. Um, Councillor Plum, your hand is still up. No. Sorry, right. Chair, I should have taken it down. That's fine. Uh, right, well, now, have you got these reasons for us to go for deferment? Um, so, um, those mentioned, and I don't know whether there was a, some points were raised, but I'm not sure they went through you to be. Anyway, right. let's go. Well, let's find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was um, a structural survey. 
Yes. To, to the satisfaction of our heritage officer, um, the viability. Uh, is, well, well, when you say to the satisfaction, can't they do a survey and then we can decide whether it's satisfactory or not? Uh, well, OK, it will be done and we'll look at it. And, and if we need some more, we'll have to ask them. Uh, right. I think that's better. Yeah. OK. Um, and then there was the, the viability. Yes, the, the, we need to be sure of that. OK. And now there are some design changes, which obviously we can't hold the applicant to it, that they may decide not to. They may come back with something different. So we can't design it here. No. But, but the points that were raised were, I think I'm correct in saying that somebody mentioned keeping the facade of the Conservative Club, possibly. But I, I would presume, therefore, that's not possible. Then replicating it was the second best option. Mm. Yep, yep. Those those two points. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and beyond that, there are obviously there are issues of materials and roof heights, etc. I'm not sure how far we got with that discussion. Well, the, the roof at the front, uh, we didn't like the little bits chopped off. And the other roof, I thought Councillor Busby came up with a good uh, solution that, um, you, you know, if one um, pitch was there for the two dwellings, if the two dwellings are kept, uh, that would be better. So I think that is something. And the variety of materials. Um, you know, there was too many different uh, materials going on. OK, so we've got hips, we've got materials. I didn't catch the point you made in the middle about um... the the pitch. Was that the the pitch of the the two three storey dwellings, which have got two pitches? Councillor Busby suggested we have one pitch over the two. And that okay. kept in keeping with the Victoria Hall pitch. OK, question mark. Right. Um, I think we're there with that. Can I just check with my colleague, Robert, that we're this is a good way to do this, Rob? Are we, are we happy that we can do a deferral with these instructions? Well, uh, Mr. thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Russell. I forgot your surname there. Apologies. Yeah. Um, with regards to that, yes, it's, it's obviously within the committee's remit to ask for um, these, but there is always, uh, I'd ask committee members to bear in mind that they can ask for it, but the applicant may not be able, to, for whatever reason, may do it or mm. may not come back. Mr. Russell, if that, that's my understanding, and obviously I'm not a planning officer, that's just my understanding of it. Um, so whatever comes back before committee might not have all of the um, requests mm. of what the committee. The only thing I've just added, because mem members have, I've got on my list as well, members talked about the um, uh, pictures of. Um, the internals or possibly um, doing that as opposed to a site visit because if we it's, as we sort of said about the internal pictures I didn't know if that chair you wanted to add that in as well well if it's possible we can get photographs from the inside it will help well, I mean it may to... be it yeah. may be something that may or may not justify why they want to do a b or c uh, although if the structural survey is, is there, then that should be enough, one would hope. But uh, we can certainly get you some photo, or speak to the applicant, get some photographs for you as well, Chair, yeah. of the inside. I've got Councillor Ayres. Yes, thank you, Chair. I would just maybe could suggest that um, when the photographs are being taken, either yourself or one of the Sudbury councillors, maybe Councillor Osborne, could um, actually go in the building as well. Just a suggestion. Uh, I, know, I think I think the the photos should either be taken by our officers or the applicant without councillors' involvement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Well, I think we've got enough there. And yes, we are aware that the applicant needn't take any of this on board. But uh, I would just say to him, I think he's heard all the comments. He's heard what councillors have said. I think he'd be very unwise not to take some of them on board. But anyway, that's that remains to be seen. Uh, Councillor Gold. Yeah, c can I just get clear in my mind, um, Mr. Russell, please? Yeah. Um, did you say that this application has been running for eleven months, and yeah. a resubmission could occur within a twelve-month period? Yeah, so the applicant, the applicant's only got a month to tweak this around. Oh when... no, 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 no! That, sorry, I, I didn't make myself clear. At, at the moment, a decision is made. Let's just say we refused it today or approved it. Um, well, uh, no, not approved. That's not logical. If we <laughs> if we refused it, um, they would have twelve months in which to um, resubmit. Uh, free of charge but if they if they withdrew it they'd only have 12 months from the date they first submitted it which would mean they've only got a month to get it a free go 
we have to we have to bear in mind it costs them money to put an application in costs us money to do it as well but you know it costs the applicant money so we don't want to put unnecessary charges on them so they they're not going to withdraw it uh, but were there a decision made they would have 12 months from that point to resubmit free of charge that that was what i thought you said um and and a comment from you that it actually might be kinder to the applicant to refuse this today well, so it, that it, they well it doesn't sound like it does it but you, but you know what i mean uh, yes uh, i do yeah it's better than the withdrawal yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, I just wanted that clarified. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, we, we would attempt to get this back as quickly as possible. Mr. I know Chairman. that's not in our gift, but it is well, in the gift of the applicant. I think, Chair, it may take a little while yeah. given the work required. So it, I, I, I wouldn't want to increase expectation of a quick return. We'll do it as quickly as we can, but it, yes. it's going to. Well, I'm sure we would. That's, that's, can I, that's can the I, undertaking. Can I legal uh, advice, Ian. Sorry, well, yeah, I, I think I'm sure, I dare say Mark will agree with me that if that there was some discussion between members as to whether what was being put forward was such a substantial revision that it was in effect a forcing a new application if i mean that there is i know the committees had this issue before uh, experienced this issue before my colleagues sometimes you you can amend an application in a fairly minor way but sometimes the um well you can get to a point where it's such a radical revision it's in effect a new application it's really not lawful to do anything other than go back to square one or you have the middle situation that's fairly common where there are quite significant changes but where the fairness demands that there's some further consultation if only with our heritage colleagues or possibly with with the um everyone else who might be entitled to be consulted but that'll be something mark and, and carolian will have to work out in the next um weeks as it were yeah. Okay. I think we're all clear on that, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes. Who? Um, it's John Hinton. John my Hinton. My hand yeah. doesn't see. When I put my hand up, it doesn't seem to appear anywhere. So no, it's it obviously no. the gremlins okay, of the system. Councillor Hinton. Uh, just a quick one to for Mark. Really, the clock is running on this application since it was uh, submitted. By deferring it, is the clock still running? And are we likely to run into the possibility of an applicant saying you didn't? De to decide my application in time and therefore would it be safer to refuse and with all these recommendations for them to come back um i will ask linda to confirm whether an extension of time has ever been agreed on this application is that the case linda we have previously agreed an extension of time so we don't run that risk of uh, refund but um, i'm sure the applicant would consider extending the time to allow for these amendments to be submitted and to bring the application back in time that's a question we will put to the applicant okay. so, so so briefly uh it won't qualify for a refund because an you know, an extension of time has been agreed at some point even though it's been going on for a long time that's right so no refund. i've got councillor ayers followed by councillor parker Sorry, Chair, I didn't realise my hand was still All right. Councillor Parker? Well, just very quickly, Chair, I'm confused by all of this conversation, frankly, because this is exactly what the um, applicant asked for right at his presentation. So surely he knows what the ramifications are. Absolutely. <laughs> Couldn't agree more with you. Right. Well, I think we've discussed this more than enough. Chair, 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 you might want to check. Uh, this is Stephen, is it? Councillor Plum? Check with Councillor Creswell. His hand is up. Right, sorry, I cannot understand why I can't see his hands, but I can't anywhere. Uh, Councillor Creswell. Councillor Creswell. Hello there, sorry. Yep, yep. I apologise, I cannot see your hand for whatever reason, I don't know. But anyway, did you want to comment? No, no. no. I, oh, right, no. okay, thank sorry. you. Right. I've still right. I've still got Sue Ayres' hand up. If that disappears, then I'm assuming there is no one else that wishes to speak. Councillor Hinton's hand is still showing. Right, Councillor Hinton. Oh, obviously, obviously got some of these hands show on other screens rather than mine. Mm -hmm. Councillor oh, Hinton. No, he's got. It's gone now. They're all oh, right. No. So they're all gone. Do so, people know how to take their hands down? Uh, because I'm not going into that one. On the top but, bar, there's a little. Yes, you, you do it. Right. Thank you. Um, Chair, just before we go to um, the next yeah. part, could I just confirm with Councillor Plum that he agrees with all of the reasons proposed by yourself as he is the seconder? Yes, I was coming to that to ask him whether he was accept all what's been said. Uh, yeah. Councillor Plum, uh, Robert, would yes. it much better? I'm fine. Thank You're you, Robert. Fine. 
Thank Good. you, Councillor. So we're all uh, satisfied that we know what we're voting on. So I'll now ask Rob to do the roll call for um, a deferment with the following um, reasons, conditions, comments and views to go back to the applicant with our Thank office. You, Chair. Can so, you just confirm what we're voting, uh, Rob? Yes, I'll, I'll list them again, Chair. Um, it was for structural survey, viability assessment, retention of or reconstruction of, replication of, sorry, the, the Conservative Club element. Um, in New Street. In New, yeah. Removal of the hips, um, a single pitch roof and change of materials. Yeah, for, yes, there's a variety of them, yeah. Okay, you're all clear. Rob? Okay, thank you, Chair. So, if you could please respond with for, against or abstain. So, Councillor Sue Ayres. Four. Councillor Melanie Barrett. Four. Councillor Peter Beer. Four. Councillor Trevor Cresswell. Four. Councillor David Busby. Four. Councillor Jane Gould. Abstain. Councillor John Hinton. Against. <laughs> Councillor Mary McLaren. Four. Councillor Adrian Osborne. Four. Councillor Lee Parker. Four. And Councillor Stephen Plum. Four. Thank you, Chair. I make that nine uh, votes uh, for, <coughs> one vote against and one vote for abstention. Yes, thank you, Mr Carmichael. I agree with that. Thank, you, thank you very much. Then that is carried. So that will come back to us in due course as soon as possible. OK, members, I think we've got to the end of the meeting. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your participation this morning and I declare the meeting closed and we no longer discuss it.